For more content like this, for more content like this, log on to GibboPresents.com. It's Gibbo, and right now I'm joined by Jamaican-born and UK-based dancehall artist Stylo G. Stylo, walk on. Lion Eye, what day, Gibbo? Walk on, Gibbo, what day? You're set to release Lion Eye, a musical project with a documentary to accompany it. We'll touch on the music side of things shortly. But before we do, I want to ask you about the documentary. The reason being that this is something that not many dancehall artists are making. So tell me, why did you decide this was something you wanted to do? I decided this was something I wanted to do mainly because, you know, just growing up in the UK, um, a lot of my fans don't know where where I'm from or what my journey was like. So I kind of bring them back to Jamaica to show them what what was what's growing up in Jamaica is like and show them just how I grew up in Jamaica and where I'm from. And, you know, it's just bringing the fans a bit closer to Stylogy, just showing more. If me I eat a, if me I eat a, a banana chips, them have to see me I eat the banana chips. You understand me? Just showing a different side of Stylogy. And I think it's, it will work because it's, it's better. It's, it's, your fans want to get closer to you now. So now you got all these social media network like Instagram, Twitter, so I'm bringing them a bit closer now. I'm bringing them as close as possible. Was the whole thing filmed out in Jamaica? 80% of it filmed in Jamaica. The rest was filmed in the UK, which I got Clean Bandit on it. I got Mr. Jam, Target. I got shout outs from everyone. Mr. David Radigan, enough people. So yeah, it's a good look. So who did you link up with in Jamaica? Who's featured on it from your time out there? I linked up with Russian. Me and Russian done some projects together. I linked up with um, Andrew Blacks. I linked up with. Um, I done the interviews on on stage. I woke up with Popcorn. Yeah, Popcorn was in. We just do go, go go to a few parties and stuff. Um, we got Sizzler. We linked Judgment Sizzler and Judgment Yard. You understand me? The selector them, Super Hype Studio. We did see there with the, we did see Rhino, everybody. Just when they got Jamaica, the, the world plays small, isn't it? So everything just won. Have you been involved with any of the production, directing, editing aspects of it as well? Yeah, yeah. Production, um, directing. When it comes to directing, style, I, I, I take part in most of my videos. Um, my youth, I done that, and that was my first release. I paid four hundred pounds for that, and we shot that on a camp on a cannon. Them times, you know, the big cannons, they just come out, and me and Mo shot that. I direct him, I tell him that I wanna have this guy running from from a from a car, and the car is the car is meant to be unknown, and then when he find out at the end, he's running from some girls. So my ideas I always have inputs in my videos, and they seems to work. Via which platforms are you going to be releasing it? Will it be on YouTube? I'm going to release it on my own YouTube, Stylogy, and definitely I'm going to put it on some higher platforms. I'm thinking of Link Up TV or Grime Daily or SBTV because, you know, that's the high platforms for urban acts in the UK. On to the music side of things. What is Lion Eye? Is it an EP, an album? I think I saw you describe it as a, a pre-album on your YouTube it channel. It is a pre-album because the album, when I, my, my album, my first album, I want it to be epic. And Lion Eye is very epic, but it's on a dancehall scale. But um, my, my first major album across the world, I think it's going to appeal to a wider crowd. So this one is mostly dancehall and it's a pre-album and it's going to be up for free download on April Fool's Day, the 1st of April. So... You see me, my plans for fool him that day. <laughs> Did you say it was going to be a free release? Yeah, it's going to be a free release. Some of the tracks are going to be on sale, but um, 90% of the, uh, the pre-album is going to be free. What are your views on giving music away for free? Some artists feel this is the way ahead and put out a lot of free content, but others are firmly against it. There's, there's, there's good and bad with music giving away for free and buying you know my my rule is buy the music but then you know this is just a little 
thing for my fans, showing appreciation. They always support. They supported me to get in the charts in the UK. They've been supporting me for years. I've been buying my songs. So this is just a free, you know, I make music every day. Right now, I'm making music. So for me to give away 10 songs is, is, is cool, man. It's, I'll make 10 more in a week. Last year, you beat off stiff competition from Taurus Riley, Chronix, Alkaline and Popcorn to win the Best Reggae Act Mobile Award. So, firstly, congratulations. But if I remember correctly, in your speech, you said, next time, make sure ITV is rolling for the Best Reggae Awards. Mm -hmm. Do you think the mobiles give reggae the treatments and respect it deserves? Reggae need more respect, not just the mobile awards alone, but other platforms need to start pushing reggae, dance all more. Because, you know, this is this is the music where, you know, represents us as Jamaicans and reggae music is, is the foundation to everything, to German bass, to garage, to even hip hop in America, you know, everything come from sound system. So I think reggae deserves, you know, everything right now. So that's why I made that speech. And hopefully this year they put it on live, man. Yeah, so the reggae deserve everything right now. So everyone needs to get behind reggae music in the UK, all over the world. Do you think there's anything UK-based dancehall artists like yourself can do to make sure that reggae gets that extra respect and gets the treatment that other genres get? Yeah, you have to do more speech like what I've done at the Mobiles. <laughs> <laughs> If we can get more speech like that, then, you know, you know, one man alone can, can do it. So we need a whole team and we need people like you with the platforms to let them know more and stuff like that. We need more gibbles and more stylogies. Do you think awards like the Mobos and even the Grammys mean as much to reggae artists as they do to artists from other genres? Of course, because it's like you're on a track and field team you're gonna aim for the olympics right it's not about us getting paid it's about your passion so to get a mobile and a grammys it's like getting a trophy you know we love the sport and music is a bit they say it's a business but to me it's a sport and i love it i treat it like a sport so everyone wants to win and not only just financially win but you know something that you can show back to your son something that you can show back to your kids and say, you know what, I won a Grammy, I won a Mobo Award. And that's that's that has trophy, really. You understand me? And they will be proud to see that. And legacies will move on and move on. As you mentioned earlier, you're an artist who caters to multiple audiences. Here in the UK, especially, some of your singles are known by a much wider audience than just the dance hall and reggae crowds. But... At the same time, you've got some singles, especially on juggling rhythms, which are only really known by people who are really in tune to the dancehall scene. Do you make a conscious effort to make music for multiple audiences? It would seem like a smart move if you do. Yeah, of course I do. I I'm doing that not a lot now. That's why I'm releasing The Lion Eye, because that's more like on a, on a scale of a dancehall thing. And, you know... Instead of you getting a song like Sound Boy, you will get a song like um, Juggling on the Snapback Rhythm. So it's, it's the good thing about my deal and my record label is they support me all the way when I'm doing my hardcore dancehall stuff. And I ain't going to change. The thing now got us watered on, so and, you know what I'm saying? It now got to watch. No, no, we, we, we add a little substance to it to make sure it appeal to a wider audience, but we're not going to throw too much seasoning on the pot. So is it ever a struggle to seem clean cut enough that parents will be happy with their kids listening to your music, but at the same time remain incredible in the dance hall scene and in the streets? Parents happy when their kids listen to Stylogy because when it comes to Stylogy, I can make that commercial song and I can make that underground song. All the parents have to just know so when they read the title and when they say, um, Parental advisor, advice, just don't make them press play. And it's simple. You understand I me? Mean? You know, like um, Michael Jackson makes song for kids. And then you see him with a bad boy video and stuff like that and acting bad. So even Michael Jackson go a bit grimy sometimes. So you can't really blame us for that. A lot of Jamaican-based dancehall artists 
start off their career by appearing on rhythms and then if they're lucky enough to hit the big time and get signed they start doing the reggae fusion tracks and experimenting with other genres perhaps catering for a more mainstream audience your career hasn't followed this path though for example as you touched on earlier the first time i heard you was on a garage track my youth with sick man and ice kids it's, mm -hmm. being based in the uk was this non-traditional roots the only or the best option for you it was the best option for me because um you know when i, I used to record on rhythms like coolie rhythm and them rhythm back in the days in a 2000 2001 too and it was just a waste of time no one was like looking into the dance stuff so after that, I just met Grime. And when I saw Grime, I was just like, OK. I saw Jamaica B, Pow, that rhythm, that track Pow was out. And I saw all of these artists doing that dance hall thing. And I was like, OK, let me try this. And when I tried it, it worked, you know. It, it was the birth of my youth. And that took me all, all over the UK, tour all over the UK, made, me, made my name in the UK. So it's just a strategy where with strategy, there ain't no limits. There ain't no limits. You give me a techno beat, if I like it, I gotta take it on. Were making it big in the dancehall scene and achieving recognition in your homeland of Jamaica always your goals? When I was in Jamaica, when I was younger, my goal was to be like my dad, man, you know, very popular and successful in what he, he does and that's being a dancehall artist. But then when he passed away, um, it's just like a, I wasn't thinking about music. I was just thinking about life and how precious my life is and how precious your family can be. And, you know, in turn, I look at mama's boy. I just start loving my mama more and just, you know what I'm saying? Then I, fl I flew to the UK. Then when we're settling now and, you know, after being strong throughout my dad's death, you know, I start realizing the only way I can move forward if I, if I pick up where, where, where he left off. And yeah, my, my, my dream was to become the biggest dancehall artist in the UK. I even said it in one of my songs. They met the yard of them start the strategy, the latest dancehall artist. Me, I got to be the greatest dancehall artist. That's when gigs just first, when gigs first came out, we're talking to artists. So that's when I started stepping on the dancehall stuff. And look, it's, it's happening now. So it's a good look. I actually remember you sending me that tune. Was it about 2007, seven, eight, maybe when MySpace was still the thing? Yeah, MySpace was popping. I remember. Yeah, I remember you sending me that on the um, on the on the gigs rhythm. Yeah, it was a it was a great tune. How do you think your career to date would have been different if you had stayed in Jamaica? Would it have been easier or harder to make it where you are today? Of course, when you're in a Jamaica, um, not even harder. If, if I was in Jamaica, I would have been still doing music. But to make it in the UK from Jamaica is easy, man. It's very easy. You can just sing about, a, you can just sing about, it's just like any artist that bust from Jamaica, is like the UK, just jump and get excited. You know? You can sing about, a, um, sing about my hat. If I sing about my hat at Jamaica tomorrow and it's shot, big artist, big artist, I'll lift my name, um, Lightwire. Big artist Lightwire coming to the UK. New single, hot. And I want a hot, hot, hot. So Jamaica is like everyone outside of the world look to Jamaica for new music. They don't look to the UK. They look for the UK. I don't know. They just think the UK will just drink tea here and just smoke cigarette. So no one is, instead of when they're looking for new music, they just go Jamaica. So, you know, now we're getting people looking in the UK and stuff like that, which is a good look. Just a couple more things before I let you go. Firstly, I want to show you something. And when I do, I want you to tell me your initial thoughts, your feelings and your emotions, whatever comes in into your head. So um, first for an interview, I've got a prop here. So I'm going to hold it up to the camera. Oh, rah. If you can see it then, for the benefit of people who can't see what I'm holding up, it is a vinyl 12-inch uh, album, the late, great Poison Chang Stylo's father and Top Cat. Uh, title of the album from JA to UK, MC Clash Volume 3, which was released on Fashion Records way back in 1993. Wow, big up man, mad, 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 that support there. That's why I know Gibber is a real man, you know music, I like it. 
I even got a copy of that, so you probably, I don't know I'm going to get a copy, man. I need to get a copy of that. And you know some of the funny things, if you actually look at the fashion trends on the front, some of the, the styling the clothes they're wearing today have almost come back around again. It seems like, um, you know, what they say about fashion coming back around certainly, certainly is true. I know I've got plenty more Poison Chang in the collection, but... That one was at the top of the top of the pile. I had to dig that one out today to show. Big you. up for that. Big up. Big up for that giver. I love it. Lastly, other than Lion Eye, what else do we need to look out for from you in the coming weeks and months? Look out for more projects with me and my label. You know, it's been two years now, and we're going into our third year, and they, they're quite happy. So it's a good look. We're gonna we're gonna release more singles, and all of this year you're gonna you're gonna get big songs commercially and hardcore so it's just the balance i just have to keep balance both of them and the balance is okay i love it we're going we're going um dubai we're going um, i'm performing in in spain barcelona i am global festival i'm performing in colombia in may that's gonna be crazy as well i'm back in europe again so uh, we all over the place man look so the team that's assassin there Chuck's there. It's a man say, DJ Corey and my look, you know what I'm saying? Whole heap of things are going. You get me? We're ready for them. Stylo, thanks a lot. Big up yourself, Gibber man. You don't know. People just follow at Stylo G, warning crew. Big up my warning crew team as well because we're pushing them a lot this year as well. Warning. So, yeah, there's a lot of projects coming out. So, just keep in tune, Gibber. And go on, when we send them the tune, them, just make sure so you download them. Shell <laughs> it. I'll show them. Gibbo presents. presents.